There is no other solution either side from to throw this entire intake manifold away and start again with a different design. To be just a simple thing. It's just it a small part. It looked like it was going to be easy, all right. It looked like it. 53 individual billet parts. It's not, it does not fit your Honda. Yeah. <laughs> we need to talk about the thermostat because it doesn't have one. Well, it does, but it's here. Oh. The way this went is I went, I want the intake manifold to go like this to a throttle body with a double butterfly like that. And I know I have to cut the, the thermostat housing off and I know we got to fit one in somewhere afterwards. I'm just gonna make that tomorrow Tristan's problem. It has now been seven months since I yeeted this off. I'm trying to squeeze exactly the same stuff into a spot half the size of what Toyota put it into. And I think I can do it. Look up. Professionals. There is no other solution either side from to throw this entire intake manifold away and start again with a different design. A lot of people will say electric water pump or just run without a thermostat and dot it heaps until it warms up. Dot, dot, dot! Uh, <laughs> no, this is a road car. Even though I have no idea how I'm going to do it, I'm going to find a way. That's kind of just what I do. For those of you wondering what a thermostat does, it's really just a temperature controlled flow valve. So when you do this, and generate lots of heat in the cooling system, the valve will open up and allow more cool water to come in and regulate the temperature of the engine. If you don't have one, well, it's just gonna cool to its maximum all the time, which means your engine will never ever warm up. So we need to solve this problem and try and squeeze the thermostat into the tiny bit of space that I have left. And it's not going so well. I feel like I've cocked up, like really badly cocked up. That's my best housing so far. I've put the thermostat in the hole, like in the spot where it can fit. Right. And it's like, there's heaps of room. And one side of the thermostat needs to go into that big ass hole in the middle there. Mate, this got pretty complicated pretty fast. This was supposed to be just a simple thing. It's just it a small part. It looked like it was going to be easy, all right? It looked like it. But after I started taking into account all the pipes and all the channels and all the bits that had to go there. The whole point was that you're getting rid of all that extra crap. I still needed all the extra crap. There's the original thermostat housing we cut off because it was in the way, right? Yeah, yeah. With all we the extra crap. We still need all the stuff. You still need every pipe. You still need every housing. You still. I, I just thought I could fit it all into a much smaller space. We are back onto fuel rails, and that's because I have gotten rid of these plastic brackets and got the billet ones done. Look at that. How good are they? Amazing. No, they're not. They're fucking terrible. I'll tell you why. The plastic ones, the dimensions of them are not exactly right. So when I went to do the billet ones, they kind of just Hold on. fit right. Why is there two runners here? Oh yeah, there's that too. I made new ones because I wanted to put locating dowels in them. There, there. Okay, right, cool. Right and I wanted somewhere to bracket fuel lines. Oh, awesome. That's so it. I just went and like made them all again. That's not all. I got more billety billet stuff done. Come more billets? More billets. Real, actual billet plenums, just like ones from the shops. Wow. So these are prototypes, so I'll probably remake them as well, but they fit and everything. They work. Mm. Look, these bad boys are titanium. The quality is actually quite breathtaking to be honest. It's pretty good. All the I, machine marks and everything. Um, yeah, they look beautiful. There's a couple of little things I'll change, so yeah. there'll be even nicer ones coming. Sure. And the throttle collector. Look at that. 
How many Billity Boys do you have? 53. 53 Billity Boys. Well, not boys. yet. I've got about 30 or 40. But the end result of this manifold I worked out is going to be 53 individual billets. That's stupid, isn't it? We're going to come back to this manifold later because yeah. we're going to do a test assembly and make sure it all fits proper and, and seals proper and sure. all of that nonsense. But I want to show you the other billets. Okay. It's got, give me that. It actually has a sort of um, quality to it. Come on, we <laughs> this <Billets>. way. <laughs> look, I got actually lots of these made. I got oh, like wow. six of them. Raw. How good does that it look? It looks really good raw. I yeah. like it. Put it on the car now. Mm. Maybe. Okay. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> Remember the oil pump bracket from last episode? Sure, it was too weak. Well, that's what some people said in the comments. <laughs> Screw you guys. But I did listen and yep. I did add in some extra bracing. So thanks for that, people. Yep. Uh, it's, it's a better product now. Yeah, it's nice. That like people it. have said it needs more bracing. So that goes through to like the air con sure. and makes it all rigid with triangles. Yeah, nice. And this guy goes in here just like we showed last episode, but yep. now it is metal, yep. right? Uh, billet engine mount. See, this was... Well, this is sort of like the last design. That's what's yeah. holding the engine up now. Plastic. Is some metal ones that oh, look okay. like that. Sure. Um, but I wasn't actually too happy with that bolt arrangement. It was hard to get yeah. the bolt in and it was hard to tighten it up. So yep. I just deleted the whole thing and started again okay. and ended up with this. Uh, so yeah. it's way easier to access that bolt. Yeah, I've just changed the general design. I've made it stronger. I've made it beefier. I've made it lighter. Yeah. Look. And I've put my logo in it. Um, yeah, it looks much easier. That's version two engine mount. Cool. Version one's will go... In the bin! So that's what's cool. going out to customers that are buying the conversion kit for Supra. I'll Supras. be ordering mine now. No, you won't. Oh, no, I can't afford it. It's not, it does not fit your Honda. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway. So anyway, I've got to get back onto the thermostat housing. That's why I got all these metal things made, right? Oh, right so sure. that I had the accuracy of metal yeah. parts around the thermostat yeah. so I could be sure that what I'm making will maybe possibly fit. Perfection. Close to it. Yeah. So far, I've gotten everything wrong the first time. Okay. Second time, perfect. So I didn't want to waste the whole night printing a boring pipe. It seemed like a waste of time and I'm kind of annoyed with pipes. So, instead, I printed the top part of the thermostat housing because I haven't even tried that yet. I don't know, I give it a 40% chance that the printer didn't fuck up. Let's go have a look. Not a hot mess of shit! <laughs> no gaps, it's strong. Uh, somehow I haven't chopped one of my fingers off doing this. Right now in the comments, why don't you use hairspray? Why don't you use tape? Why don't you like use a proper thing that you're meant to print on instead of some piece of glass with some kids craft glue on it? Meh 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 meh. Well, I, I haven't got an answer for all that shit. You're probably right. Fuck. Get off. <laughs> oh, that's a beautiful sound. Oh. Yeah, yeah, look at that. It's perfect inside, perfect. All right, let's go break all this shit out of it and see if it fits. This thermostat housing and this bad boy closes it up. It's as simple as that. What the hell? <laughs> it's, it's, it's all. <laughs> the bolt hole's in the wrong spot. How'd I cock that up? It's ruined the entire print. I gotta start again. So I've just loaded the plenum up with the titanium stalks. We'll get them all aligned. And what we want to do 
is test if my sealing solution is going to work. So it's a tongue and groove sort of setup. There's a groove in this piece and a tongue in the other piece, and there's a the right amount of clearance between the two to crush an O-ring to the right size. The O-ring in question is this two millimeter stuff. A common thing to do is just to make our own where we cut the right length and then glue it together at the end and it creates the exact size O-ring. Now, uh, you need to really like align these stalks perfectly because the uh, interlocking doodads I put on the end are very tight clearance um, and they prevent the stalks from actually being able to turn and disrupt the flow. It keeps them on the perfect angle so air can get past it like a knife. Let's uh, smash them in. That's cool. Everything's sort of gone to plan so far. Little bit of wiggle and there we go. All we need to do now is put bolts in it and see if it actually pulls up all the way and crushes that o-ring like we want to and make sure nothing deforms or warps. I've never designed anything like this before so I guess we're just going to find out. Let's maybe put it on its end like that. It's not going to fall off. Winner. Off to see Mr. Forsh. Just using these uh, generic 10 mil bolts for now, but the final piece will have something a bit prettier. Maybe some nice button head in hex bolts that sort of suit the curviness of all the curviness. There's a risk that this third one and the rigidity of the whole thing is just not enough to clamp the whole thing down. Um, the ideal thing would have been to have a fourth one at the front um, or run six or seven, but that's more money, that's more flow disruption, and we are going for maximum power here. So I've gone for the balance, which I think is gonna give us the best power while still being strong enough, just bit of a Colin Chapman sort of mentality there. Let's wang them up and see what happens. I can't really uh, emphasize how nervous I am about this bit because if I haven't put enough stalks in there, then quite legitimately, these runners and these plenums are just no good for boost. I'd be able to maybe use them NA, but boost, no. So now there's so much money in this. We'll start tightening the middle one first and just sort of ease them down. So we're going to have to put a significant amount of torque on it. That's one of the reasons I chose titanium as a material for these stalks because I knew rigidity and strength was going to be important. It's definitely biting hard on that o-ring and I can't see any bending of the plenum or the runners. But if these bolts can't pull up tight, then it means they're sort of relying on the O-ring for tension. And that's not good because if the O-ring sort of compresses over time, then the bolts have come loose. So you want it to pull up metal to metal and then tighten it. That's the only way to have, you know, reliability. Well, this is nerve wracking. I did ask the opinion of some people whether this would be uh, strong enough having a stalk so far back sealing such a long distance away and relying on these parts flexing zero percent. Look, some people told me they didn't think it was good enough, it wasn't gonna work. And I'm hoping so much to prove them wrong because I looked at it and I decided it was going to work. So, please work. It's closing up. I'm gonna say it's closed up there. And around here, We've still got what I'd consider to be, look, that looks like 0.1 of a millimeter. That, to me, like a 0.1 mil gap over that entire distance, I'm satisfied with. I'll probably, you know, remake a lot of these parts anyway, because they are prototype items. Um, so we sort of make them with the possibility of minor issues in mind. If I do make another set for myself, I might even just reduce the height of that 
tongue and groove thing by maybe 0.1 of a mil, 0.15 of a mil, just to reduce the amount we're compressing the O-ring just that little bit. But overall, I think that's an awesome result. It's definitely sealed, it's definitely not gonna leak, and it's almost flawless in its rigidity, almost. Yeah, I mean, it makes the right noise too. Ooh, man. <laughs>finished printing it out and the computer says this will fit but the computer doesn't always tell the truth so let's see now that bolt holes in the right spot it's kind of making sense Always make sure you use the uh, correct length bolt. Perfect. Yeah. All right, pipes fit. Housing fits, nothing's touching here. Well, it's close, two millimeters I'd say. There we have it, a thermostat housing and water outlet housing and everything all in one. I shall call it the coolant manifold. Water comes out here, along there, out the pipe to the radiator, back in from the radiator to here, into the thermostat, down to the water pump. Job's done. Ha! you're rolling yeah cool can you be less tall <laughs> shane's back and i'm amped v12 o'clock uh, hey <laughs> i didn't even realize i just punned that that was good that's the time that's the time mr <laughs> <Twelve o'clock. laughs> if this is how long it's going to take to get a small job like this done we're never going to finish this seriously well after this is done we're almost there all we've got to do is finish the oil pump the valve covers the turbo system the ecu install the fuel system the exhaust the transmission the clutch and the intercooling right and they're all going to be real real quick simple jobs yeah, right well if this is any indication that's my point only months only months. Only okay, months. well, add all those up. And Think about how far we've come this year. Last year, it looked exactly like this, but a different colour. This year, it's you, orange. You're not helping make your case. <laughs>